Hello and welcome to the Grad Dialogue. My name is Yatan, the Grad uh, Executive Director. And this month, my guest is uh, Josh Benson. You know, Josh uh, comes from Economic Development Cabinet in Frankfurt. Uh, he also spoke to the Grad Board this afternoon. Uh, but originally, I had to say this, Josh, <laughs> <coughs> and I always like to promote, you know, my fellow yeah. grad, grad and citizens. Uh, he's from Ohio and he grew up and, you know, also went to high school and then I guess he went to school uh, at uh, uh, Ohio County High School, high school. Okay. and then right. uh, so, you know, so anyway, family's still there. So. It's still there, okay, the family's still there. Anyway, Josh, right now, uh, he has been uh, with the Economic Development Cabinet as the, uh, uh, you know, for the, as a workforce and economic development professional with almost 10 years of experience with the cabinet, uh, up to serving as the, uh, also sort of the manager of the Bluegrass uh, State Skills and many of the industries in grad, and I have taken advantage of the, you mm, know, uh, industry definitely. skills, you know, for, for expansion and location as well. Uh, Josh has, uh, you know, was named the Executive Director of Workforce Development in, in, in uh, November 2013. And in that position, uh, he led the Cabinet for Economic Development's workforce efforts, uh, including the workforce projects management, uh, including policy development. Uh, I think I believe that you had also worked on the Work Ready Communities Absolutely. Project too. You know? So anyway, I'm so, so, so excited to have Josh on our show. And you no, know, I think if you, if you heard my introduction of economic development, I probably use workforce more than economic <laughs> development. You know? So Josh, let me just go on and uh, start with that. I, you know, the whole horizon is changing. You mm -hmm. know, the chasing of the small stack and the big stack is, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the change as well as, uh, you know, large industries. Sure. But so, what are some of the uh, uh, economic development challenges uh, for the state of Commonwealth sure. of Kentucky as well as the grad region? You know? Sure. So. Um, <clears throat> You know, you mentioned workforce being a main topic. Yeah. Workforce and economic development are almost synonymous these right, days. Right. Uh, the number one reason why companies from any sector of the economy, whether it's manufacturing or healthcare, IT, finance, the reason that they grow mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. of the availability of a qualified workforce. So um, that is no doubt an opportunity and a challenge uh -huh. uh, for mm -hmm. Kentucky. Um, when we look at our economic development strategy, um, obviously, business development, in that meaning, you know, recruiting industry uh, are in, in different companies to the state, as well as um, helping existing companies grow uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is, is something that we focus on. Um, but other areas are, are coming into economic development to be our focus, one being workforce development, um, the other being entrepreneurship and small business uh -huh. development. Uh -huh. So you know we we hear that term all the time entrepreneurship. I mm -hmm. uh, you know that's that's the key of the future and everything yeah. else. You know the coal industry is uh, in a decline, mm, uh, sure. large manufacturing in decline. Entrepreneurship we're going to save us and everything else. Yeah. You know we have done at the grad uh, one time on the entre entrepreneurship club for a while, sure. you know, trying to get to help them out and everything else. But that's kind of tough nut to crack. It is. You know? So what what is what is state doing in that? And what what, what you advise you would have? Sure. The local communities on that. Sure, you know, you're right. It very, it is a very difficult thing mm -hmm. to try to hone in on and, and wrap wrap your mind around or policy around because entrepreneurship in itself is almost it, almost like a maverick mentality. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there are more and more schools, whether they be high schools or colleges, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that are creating entrepreneurship tracks mm -hmm. and degrees. But that's a that's a very difficult question mm -hmm. to answer. Mm -hmm. Is how how do you standardize what an entrepreneur is? Right, because right, right. Um, it's um, it's a challenge. So what we're doing mm -hmm. is trying to educate, you know, the next generation. The, right. the governor. Uh, we've always had the governor's school for the arts and, right, and that sort right, of thing. A right. few years ago, um, the governor's school of entrepreneurship was created. Okay. And okay. so. Um, that that brings high school students mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are business minded mm -hmm. and it brings them in and teaches them about how to create a sales pitch mm -hmm. a business plan mm -hmm. how to develop a budget mm -hmm. um, how to take a, an idea and move it into something that's marketable right. um, so ho teaching those skills uh -huh. Uh -huh. is is really a um, important factor in creating a culture of entrepreneurship uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, because it is kind of a vague idea. Right, right. Um, but I mean, you know, in, in Owensboro, I think we are, we are proud to have, yes. uh, you know, first of all, uh, thanks to you guys, mm -hmm. and we had the innovation yeah. in the center mm -hmm. uh, that covers all yeah. seven, seven counties Absolutely. You know, and outside. 
And then also, uh, you know, the, the GoEDC, you know, yes. through their efforts on, uh, Absolutely. You know, the, on commercialization and an innovation center. Yep. Uh, and I believe they now have a working with the school systems. Absolutely. So all those, I would imagine, is kind of following what yeah, you're talking it's about. It's all in the same vein. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And and Owensboro and the, the whole Owensboro region, uh -huh. uh, the grad area, has is really a leader in that type of thinking, community thinking. Um, you know, the the Owensboro economic development leaders do uh -huh. a phenomenal job of supporting um, entrepreneurship, like you said, in the school districts. You know, it's. Uh, Having the superintendent break in Owensboro, right, who has right. an economic and small business background, um, is very helpful in, in trying to hone those skills for a new generation. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the Innovation Center, too, mm -hmm. and you know the Kentucky Innovation Network helps individuals and small companies to take an idea and move it into a business. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, it, it really is. You know, we don't want to lose creative, innovative people to other areas, when you think about innovation and entrepreneurship, you think about right. Silicon Valley and, and the Boston area and, and, and bigger cities like that. Well, we want to create that same type of synergy in Kentucky mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the Innovation Network and obviously what's going on here in Owensboro and having a leader in some companies like Kentucky Bioprocessing right. who are right. you know, right. playing on the world stage right. On, right. on innovation right. um, is is critical to changing the culture and creating uh -huh, that uh, uh -huh, system of uh -huh. entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because everybody wants to create jobs. Yes. You know? And then uh, we, we talked about the workforce, mm -hmm. and you said that you know, the cabinet is not involved in workforce, and workforce and economic yeah. development becomes synonymous. Mm -hmm. I know that the recently uh, Cham State Chamber of Commerce yes. you know, came out with their report, yeah. you know, for how much, how many millions of dollars yeah. they, you know, that we spend on workforce right. training and everything else. Yeah. So, uh, so that means there are quite a few players. Mm -hmm. And, and how, what is what is cabinet doing to sure. bring them all together into some sure. sort of you know manageable <laughs> communications sure. in a network or something? You have you know? identified the challenge uh -huh. that uh -huh. has existed for quite some time. Uh -huh. Is that you know there are federal dollars that come in for workforce development, there are state dollars. Um, you know historically, workforce development has been about people development, right. and it's almost been a human service side uh -huh. of things. And while that is still critically important. Um, the, what we've seen evolving over the last couple of years is a transition to making not only a human service, but also a business service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're just training people without a, a path or a direction of where those skills are, can go, then we're not doing the human service side of thing justice. And so it's critically important for the workforce system to have quality business relationships mm -hmm. so that we can better advise you know, an individual who might be looking to change careers or who is you know, unemployed or a student who's thinking about their career to give them really market-based um, answers and suggestions on what opportunities exist in their community and what skills are necessary to get those jobs. So about two years ago, the workforce partners in Kentucky, when you look at the state level, and that includes the Economic Development Cabinet, um, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System, right the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet, which right. that includes um, the career centers and the uh -huh. workforce uh -huh. investment boards, um, as well as the Kentucky Labor Cabinet, came together uh, to create what's called the Kentucky Skills Network. And that helps us better identify what our resources are and help us to reduce redundancy in the uh -huh. system. Uh -huh. And so we've streamlined some resources and tried to, to create a more efficient system so that individuals who go through the workforce system can then be connected to opportunities in, in, the, in the job market. Mm -hmm. So we've made a lot of progress. There's still a lot of work to be done. But so at least now, now you got everybody at the table. Yes. And looking for the same, you know, same common yeah. mission of creating jobs and entrepreneurship, you know, so. Correct, yeah, yeah we're at the table yeah. and our, our visions are becoming the same. Right, right. And, yeah. and you know, there's, like I said, it's, it's going to take time to, right. to fully right. align those things. Right, yeah. Because I mean, we have years of doing things a certain sure, way, sure. so it's yeah. uh, there's some organizational change that's yeah. taking place in the mindsets yeah. of folks. But you know, I mean, maybe a couple of things. Uh, uh, as you gone through over the years, mm -hmm. I and mean, especially the, in the last uh, four years or so, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think our growth potential are in Commonwealth as far as the sure. economic development or the new jobs? Are sure, you know, Kentucky has always had a strong automobile industry uh -huh. in Kentucky. We right. have, right. you know, three automotive 
assembly plants, right, actually right. four automotive assembly plants in Kentucky, the Corvette plant, the GM facility in Bowling Green, obviously Toyota, sure. um, and the two Ford facilities in right, Louisville. Right. So we always have had and always will have a robust automotive manufacturing and sector. And so many supportive yes. industries. I mean, yeah. there yeah. are, uh, there is an automotive related industry in around 100 of Kentucky's 120 counties. Wow. So it no doubt is a, a main player, not to mention, you know, General Electric and, you know, the appliance manufacturing market and the right. supply chain there. Um, Kentucky's also well situated. Um, so just not manufacturing. That's always going to be a strong suit of our economy. But transportation and logistics. Mm -hmm. We are at the cross section of the Midwest and the mm -hmm. South. Um, we're in a day's drive to I believe it's 90% of the, the U.S. population. Right, right. And so we are in a good spot logistically, the UPS hub in Louisville, um, the growth and, and really the, um, the expansion of our interstate system in Kentucky uh -huh. um, helps that logistics industry. So that's one, obviously healthcare right, um, right. with an aging population, right. um, with changes to the healthcare industry, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, where it used to, healthcare used to be your family practitioner and, um, and then the hospital. Right. And now, right. of course, now there's all kinds of specialized medicine, right. long-term care facilities in Jefferson County. We have over um, you know, nine or 10 long-term care headquarters. Wow. And so, and then on top of that, everything is becoming more automated in any sector. Right. And so the IT industry uh -huh. is, a, um, is a phenomenal opportunity. Um, in this region in particular, uh, the transformation in, of agriculture. Right. Uh, agriculture is always going to be uh -huh. a, a huge part of the Kentucky economy. Um, but that's even become more automated and yeah. more technical. Yeah. You, you're exactly right on that. And, I, and, I, and all those things you listed are the challenges we face. Mm -hmm. Talking about the challenges, you know, as, as yeah. we close, come close to the uh, to Bashir administration sure. and, all, and uh, to the leadership of Secretary Larry Hayes mm -hmm. and, you know, and Governor Bashir, sure. uh, you know, quite a few international and you know, yeah. new developments occur and everything else. Sure. Hopefully the future brings you, uh, yeah. you know, great opportunities. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, and again, so proud you know, to have somebody from Ohio County at this important position, also be on the grad dialogue, but yeah. also looking forward to helping Kentucky as well, helping our region too. Sure. You know, so. I'm very uh, honored to be on the show. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Again, thank you for watching Grad Dialogue. We've been talking to Josh Banton uh, about economic development and workforce challenges that we face in the common, Commonwealth as well as for the grad counties. If you have any question, you can call me the grad 926-4433 or go on and log on to the uh, grad website and download the grad app. Thank you very much.